Just 60 years after the legendary SR-71 Blackbird's first flight, its legacy still lives on. But if in the 1970s the speed of more than Mach 3 seemed crazy for a production model, then in today's hypersonic arms race, the US intends to double the records of past generations. We give you the new project of the secrecy from specialists at Skunk Works, the SR-72, also known as the Son of the Blackbird. The first mention of a possible successor to the Blackbird came in 2007, when information was leaked to the press about a US Air Force contract with Lockheed Advanced Development Projects to develop an aircraft over Mach 6, or over 4,600 miles per hour, with a transcontinental range at an altitude of about 100,000 feet. At the same time, plans for the device's debut in 2020 were, to put it mildly, super optimistic. In November 2013, the SR-72 reappeared in the press. This time, Aviation Week and Space Technology shared exclusive data from the Skunk Works team, due to which its servers died valiantly. Moreover, not only because of the surge of public interest, but also from DDoS attacks. In one article, Skunk Works talked about long-term plans to create an affordable ISR. Intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance hypersonic strike platform in the form of a twin-engine aircraft with a cruising speed of Mach 6. The device is meant to penetrate enemy airspace at high speed and altitude, which Lockheed Martin described as a sweet spot for hypersonic air-breathing weapons. In other words, the aircraft had to survive where even subtle advanced subsonic or supersonic aircraft and UAVs could not do it. In addition to this, the SR-72 will be able to hit targets before they know where it is or when attempting to hide from hypersonic reconnaissance. We're going to digress just a bit here, going back to what Lockheed Martin worked on as part of the DARPA project from 2003 to 2006. We're talking about the DARPA Falcon project, during which Lockheed Martin created an experimental hypersonic glide vehicle HTV-2 or Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2, capable of flying at Mach 20 to test the technology that allows the United States to reach any target in the world within one hour. This principle was further developed on a larger scale as the Prompt Global Strike Initiative. Lockheed put a lot of work in the HTV-2, building it out of durable carbon composite material to prevent critical internal components from collapsing, because they were literally inches from its surface. And since surface temperatures could reach over 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, Lockheed didn't even think about choosing conventional steel, because it would start to melt at around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The HTV-2 was supposed to lead to the development of the HTV-3X, known as Black Swift, the basis for a 2025 deployment of a reusable hypersonic cruiser or drone capable of taking off from a conventional runway. Its payload would be around 12,000 pounds to hit targets up to 10,350 miles, 16,650 kilometers away, in less than two hours. However, DARPA collected enough data during the first and second tests of the HTV-2 in 2010 and 2011 that the third flight and subsequent versions were cancelled. Although the HTV-3X was cancelled back in October 2008, work on the HTV-2 continued until the summer of 2014, with the goal of learning from the technology by improving the tools and methods for designing high-temperature aerodynamic shells. And now back to 2013. Before revealing a small part of their global plans to Aviation Week in 2013, Skunk Works worked with Aerojet Rocketdyne for more than seven years to develop a method for integrating a finished hypersonic engine with a scramjet to propel an aircraft from standstill to speeds of Mach 6 or more. The basis for this approach was the same cancelled HTV-3X, but further advances by Lockheed and Aerodyne went well beyond the initial design, solving one of its key technical problems, the high-speed gas turbine engine. The Skunk Works team was tasked with designing an engine covering subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic flight modes. Roughly speaking, a kind of Swiss army knife, which would have a solution for each phase of the flight. In June 2017, Lockheed Martin Executive Vice President and General Manager of Advanced Development Programs, Rob Weiss, confirmed in an interview with Aviation Week that hypersonic technology has matured, and they, along with DARPA and other agencies, are working hard to bring new capabilities to the US fighter fleet and their future developments. Weiss, of course, could not disclose the details, referring to the information about the project's features as very sensitive. Overall, comments by Weiss as well as by former Lockheed CEO Marilyn Hewson indicated that the most important step in the development of the SR-72 is primarily the integration of the combined cycle engine and other technologies associated with hypersonic flight. Nowadays, the United States is developing more than a dozen promising hypersonic programs. Among them, the SR-72 is very often associated with mayhem a secret U.S. Air Force hypersonic development program aimed at creating expendable testbeds for new advanced jet engines. 
including turbine-based combined cycle designs. Conventional jet engines use a centrifugal compressor, or rotating fan blades to compress the incoming air before mixing it with fuel and detonating for propulsion. Scramjet engines, on the other hand, forego the compressor in favor of using the enormous pressure of high-speed airflow pushed into the engine, resulting in higher speeds than jet engines. But at lower speeds, the incoming air pressure is not enough to keep the scramjet working properly, which means that a craft with such an engine cannot fly slowly enough to land, therefore it can only be used once. This is where the combined cycle scramjet engine comes in, which includes a traditional jet engine and can fly just like a conventional aircraft and be used many times. According to aviation experts and engineers, this type of engine will revolutionize both the defense sector and air travel. To date, no country has succeeded in introducing a scramjet into a rocket or aircraft. Although the United States is confidently moving towards this ambitious goal. Thus, in the fall of 2021, Northrop Grumman conducted a successful scramjet flight as part of the DARPA Hawk program. And in March of 2022, Lockheed Martin joined the successful testing of hypersonic guns. The Mayhem project involves an expansion of the scramjet concept used to create the Hawk, but they only use part of the combined cycle required for the success of the SR-72. The Air Force still has to figure out how to power a traditional jet engine without it blocking the airflow into the scramjet and making the aircraft too heavy. Leading the invisibility race, the US has had eyes on all rival attempts to create effective countermeasure systems in different parts around the world. Therefore, the Mayhem project and other hypersonic aircraft developments no longer rely on invisibility choosing instead to reach insane speeds with it. It is this that will allow the aircraft to freely fly into enemy territory, collect the necessary data, or hit the targets, then fly away. No less important are the components of the hypersonic reconnaissance aircraft that will act as the placement for ammunition in the future SR-72 and its hypersonic colleagues, as well as the resistance of the aircraft surfaces to extreme temperatures, which they are guaranteed to have with a speed of Mach 5 to 6. And not only materials, but also electronics must withstand high speed throughout the flight, while maintaining stable communication connections to perform precise maneuvers and overcoming a number of defense systems under peak load conditions. Even if we're not taking into account the complexity of designing a universal engine that would be ideal for aircraft such as the SR-72, there still remains another important drawback to hypersonic weapons, the price. According to preliminary Pentagon estimates, the current cost of hypersonic missiles could range from 90 to 110 million dollars. For comparison, the latest Lockheed Martin F-35A Lightning II stealth fighter costs 80 million dollars. At this point, many in the US Air Force may sadly recall the old Blackbird eating up only 23 million per plane in the 1960s. However, it should be kept in mind that the capabilities of this one and its successor, the SR-72, are very different. Speaking of a potential prototype Blackbird successor, former Lockheed CEO Marilyn Hewson also noted that it would be similar in size to the F-22 Raptor and cost less than $1 billion. On the one hand, this data should not be taken as hard facts. On the other hand, in December 2022, the cost of the futuristic B-21 Raider strategic bomber was estimated at a very real $700 million per unit. So why is the SR-72 worse? General interest in the SR-72 was once again stirred up by the continuation of the legendary film Top Gun, which was released in theaters in the spring of 2022. It featured the mysterious Dark Star hypersonic aircraft modeled by the same Skunk Works division. Information about this even appeared a little later on the official Lockheed Martin web resources. But what is most interesting is that representatives from the company made it clear that the characteristics of the Dark Star aircraft, however, like itself, can go beyond the film industry, becoming part of our reality. Was this another confirmation of active work on the SR-72, or just an attempt to taunt those who still want to believe? We've got a feeling the answer to this question won't be long in coming. Do you think we will see a new Skunk Works creation in the flesh before the 2030s? Let us know in the comments below! And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.